Welcome. Thanks for joining me on this lovely little math chat we're going to have today. So what I have is I want to graph y equals x squared minus 7x plus 8. And if you notice, this graph or this um, equation is a little bit different than our parent equation that we had where it was just y equals x squared. And it becomes a little bit more difficult now that we have these different numbers because they're going to alter our graph. They're going to transform it in certain ways. So one thing we need to understand is this is a quadratic. And all quadratics can be rewritten in the form of ax squared plus bx plus c. All right, where a, b, and c are real numbers and they are coefficients. And I'm going to get to that in a second. So when graphing a quadratic, if you remember when I graphed y equals x squared, we use a table of values. And it was pretty basic. You pick the table of values you want to pick, and then you plugged them in and you found them. Well, when we have a transformation, meaning the graph is going to be shifted, there's certain things that are you know, reflected and dilated, there's a whole bunch of things that can be happening. So one thing we need to do is we need to be careful about which table of values we pick. We just can't arbitrarily pick some positive and some negatives and expect to get a parabola. So what we need to do is one thing we noticed about our quadratic is it had that axis of symmetry. Y equals x squared was symmetrical about the y axis. And that's the same thing with all quadratics. They're all symmetrical about a axis of symmetry. And that axis of symmetry, it has a certain formula. And that's why we use this definition or the definition of a quadratic equation to be able to write that. So the axis of symmetry is the value of x equals to opposite of b divided by 2a. So for all quadratics, and if you would have noticed for y equals x squared, this answer would have been 0. That's why I chose points that are negative and a positive on the left and right of um, x equals 0. So for this equation, though, we're going to have a different axis of symmetry. So when I plug this in, I have x equals negative, negative 7, divided by 2 times 1. And that ends up equaling x equals 3.5. So what that means is that means my graph is symmetrical about the line 3.5, meaning all the points that are on the left of 3.5, if I just kind of put them over on that right-hand side, they're going to be exactly symmetrical about this line. So let's kind of get a little graph here, what it would be like. So right now, the only thing I know about this graph is that 1, 2, 3, is that I have a line of symmetry about 3.5. The next thing I want to remind you of is the graph of that quadratic. If you remember the graph of the quadratic, we call it like that U-shaped parabola, right? And remember it had a little point up top and bottom. And that point is what we call the vertex. And what's so important about the vertex is not even know that it's just at the top or the bottom of a parabola, but also the line of symmetry goes to that point. So therefore, the next thing you want to do is once you determine the line of symmetry, you want to determine the vertex. So to do that, remember the x value of your vertex is your line of symmetry. So to find the y value, what you're going to have to do is plug in, just like you did table of values, but plug in your x value of your line of symmetry into your function. So what I have here, when I do my, uh, my x, y table, I'm going to plug in 3.5 for x. So you just do you know, y equals... 3.5 squared minus 7 times 3.5 plus 8. So you get 12.25 minus 24.5 plus 8, and you end up getting negative 4.25. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sketch that graph. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So it's going to be roughly right around here. So now it means my vertex, the low point or high point right now on my graph, is at uh, negative or I'm sorry, 3.5, negative 4.25. So the next thing now is, remember I told you that our graph is symmetrical about our x-axis. So what I need to do, rather than just picking negative and positive numbers, I want to pick numbers that are to the left of your axis symmetry and to your right of the axis symmetry. And for this example, I'm just going to choose uh, one value to the left and to the right, just to make sure this video is not oh, way too long. All right. So I'm going to pick a point. Let's pick positive 2. And let's pick 5. Okay? And I just chose those values for those 1. I kind of chose them before and I already looked at the graph. And 2, it doesn't really matter. As long as you have a point to the left and to the right, um, you'll be okay. And actually, yeah, we'll just choose those two points. And I'm going to actually kind of prove something to you as well as we look at it. So let's do 2 because 2 looks like it might be pretty simple. So I have y equals 2 squared minus 7 times 2 
plus 8. Well, that equals 4 minus 14 plus 8. And it looks like you're going to have negative 2. So let's go and plot this point. So at 2, I'm going to go down negative 2. Now remember, since my parabola is symmetrical about this point, this distance is going to be the same over here. And what I notice is this actually is the same point of 5. Look at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, down 2. So actually, I don't even have to do the work, but at 5, negative 2, I have the exact same point. So now I need to determine how is this graph going to look. Well, remember, it's a U-shaped graph. So my graph is definitely going to continue going upwards. So this vertex ends up being the low point of my graph. And there's a couple other ways that we can uh, determine how to graph our function. You can also look at the x and y intercepts. But we'll just, we'll just focus right now on determining the vertex and then choosing table of values that are to the left and to the right of your line of symmetry. So there it goes, ladies and gentlemen. That's how you graph a problem. Thanks.